So let's take a look at lists and dictionaries. Now we know so far in Python that when we have a variable, we can have a value for that variable. So in this case, we have signed The Last of Us, which is the title of a game, to the variable named game. Now, what if we had a game shop which had multiple games in it, maybe 5, 10, maybe even 100 games? We wouldn't want to create a variable for every single game we have in store. The better way to do it is to create a list. Now, let's do this. If we had to print type, you're probably familiar with this by now. If we had to print the type of game, you'll know Python is seeing it as a string. But to make it a list, all we need to do is open a square bracket and close the square bracket. And if we hit run, it comes back with list. Now, a list isn't very useful if we only have one item in that list. So let's make this list get called games. And let's add, okay, so more games, Fortnite, maybe uh, Valorant, if I could spell, and Okay, so now let's remove the type and print games. You can see we have multiple games. Okay, so that's cool. So now, as a human, if I had to look at this list, I'd be like, okay, this is The Last of Us, that's item 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, if you're a human, yeah, okay, fine. If you have a shopping list, and you have uh, list number 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe buy eggs, buy bananas, um, if you had to speak to somebody else to ask about that list, you'll say, did you get item number 2 in that list? Did you get the bananas? But in programming, lists don't start from 0, they start, uh, sorry, they don't start from one, they start from zero. So The Last of Us has an index of zero. Fortnite has one, Valorant has two, FIFA has three. So if we had to print out the index zero, what do you think we're going to get back? The Last of Us. So we can refer to a specific value in the list or item in the list by doing square brackets and putting the number of the index. So Fortnite 2 comes back with Valorant, 3 comes back with FIFA. There's a very important distinction to note. Lists in programming starts off with 0. Now, what if we wanted to perform more actions on the list? What if we wanted to add another item to the list? We can do something called append. Now, I'm just going to take this away for a second. If I hit full stop again, you can see that my IDE has brought up a bunch of methods that we can use when manipulating lists. So that comes built in into Python out the box that you can use. And if we had to do append, let's add a new game here. Let's add a call of duty. Okay. So now if we had to print out the lists, you can see call of duty has been appended to the list. Right. So let's explore something else maybe count and let's try to count fortnite so the count method counts how many times the value fortnite exists in the list so it does return a result though notice that the append just straight away added to the list now with games we counting something so we're getting a result and we want to print that result and the result is one but if we had to have fortnite multiple times it'll be two now, this whole built-in functions is something that can be useful to you. It's not required um, in your normal, you won't be tested on these methods, but it can help you in writing a program. In fact, in the Python docs, they have a list of everything here. So you don't have to memorize this. Um, you know, if you need to refer to it anytime, you can. And yeah, that is it for lists. Very important to note that you can have multiple items in the list and programs start off counting it from an index of zero. So you have an index and a value in the list. Okay, so pause the video here, take some time, explore lists, play around with it, maybe play around with some of these functions and try to understand what is happening here. It's such an important distinction. You see lists all the time in programming. So now that you've done that, let's take a look at dictionaries. Now, so far we have the Last of Us. So we have game titles in a list. Okay. But what if we wanted to add a little bit more information for each one of these game titles? Because we have a shop, 
say we want to know the price of each game. We can add a new item to the list, but that won't quite make sense because The Last of Us, if it's 45 pounds, is this a new item in the list? There's nothing associating The Last of Us with 45 pounds. So before we create our dictionary, let's do this again. So we can print type games. We have to run that, it comes back with a list. But now let's create our dictionary. First, I'm just going to put each new item on a new line. I've done nothing different here. All I've done is just made it easier to read. If we hit run again, it still comes back as a list. Now we're going to change it to a dictionary. So remove your square brackets and replace it with curly braces. And now I am going to put a price for The Last of Us. Now, actually, in fact, I'm just going to do that for every game. Fortnite is free, Valorant I don't know, is free as well, but we'll just put a value there. But we still have Fortnite here. Let's make this again. Okay. Now if I had to print this out, it comes back as dict with dictionary. Okay, so let's inspect the dictionary. Now, what we have here is a key and a value. So that's important to know. Dictionaries contain key value pairs. So it's a pair, two, right? A key and a value. So in this case, we name we took the name of our game and we made it a key. And we gave it an associated value, which is the price. So let's try printing games and zero. Do you think this is going to work? No, because it says key error. Because what's happening here is we don't have a list anymore. And we don't reference anything by indexes. We have to reference them by key. So let's take this key. And because it's a string, we need to make sure it's a string. Run it again, and we get 45. So you can see now that if we had to do Fortnite, we can use keys and reference it like that. Another good use of this is, say we had, I don't know, Reval, and we wanted to know Reval's phone number. If we had Tom, and we want to know Tom's phone number. And notice now if we don't have this key anymore, this key error, let's reference Reval, that comes back with the number. Some more bonus content here. If you did games, very similar to lists, you have many different functions here that you can use. Uh, let's use pop as an example. So um, if we had to print games this time, I think we just had to do pop and then reference the key. When we run this, you can see that we have pop removes values from a dictionary. So if we had to do Reval, we only removed Reval and Tom's still there. Okay, so again, I encourage you to try this stuff out. If you can work with it in code in the computer, then it will be much easier for you to grasp when you're writing your paper.